All right, story time. Kind of looks like I'm in front of a green screen, doesn't it? <laughs> story time. Uh, this story I want to share happened last month, and I got some pretty good life lessons out of it. Hopefully somebody else gets some value out of it as well. We were having my youngest son's birthday party, his first birthday party, and my neighbor that lives behind this beautiful wall of green thought that we were being a little loud, that the kids run around at 10 o'clock at night were being a little loud. And so he just yelled over the fence, um, shut up. And one of my guests said, your neighbor back there just said, shut up. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, he yelled it a couple times. He yelled over, shut up. And I'm like, that doesn't seem, seem right. Like he's been a great neighbor. Like, this is really bizarre. And so me being who I am, I barked back over the fence. And I'm like, did you tell us to shut up? And uh, he said, yeah. He actually took a couple of seconds of me saying, a couple of tries of me saying, did you say shut up for him to answer? Because I think he already wasn't sure he wanted the confrontation. But and I'm like, did you tell us to shut up? And he finally responds. He goes, yeah, I did. And um, he's like, there's other people in this world and other people on this planet. And I'm like, okay, well, if you've got a problem, why don't you just come over here and talk to me? Why don't you just come say something to me? Don't just yell, shut up. I'm like, how dare some, some kids be playing and being loud on a summer night at 10 o'clock at night? Like, how dare they have fun? And I just thought it was just ridiculous. And, and I said, you, you tell me you can hear me from inside your home? Because inside our home, I couldn't hear our noise. And he lives even further away. And uh, he says, you're damn right I can. And I'm like, bullshit. You, you're not hearing us. You're just being a curmudgeon. And uh, so we kind of left it at that. We kind of barked at each other a little bit. And then I walked back and was talking to, the, to my guest. My brother-in-law, he was just, well, maybe he's just having a bad day. Because I told him he's been a great guest. I don't know, or a great neighbor this entire time. And uh, he said, well, maybe he's just having a bad day. And we don't know what's going on with him. I'm like, you know what? You're right. That probably is it because he's just been a fantastic neighbor. And uh, so then I just kind of like brushed it away. And the next morning he came over and knocked on my door. Um, the door, but I wasn't home. So he was ringing the doorbell cam. And and eventually he was just asking me like, hey, can you come out and talk? And I was trying to tell him I'm not home. I'm not home. But he couldn't hear me very well. But he, my wife answered and he told her the full story. Then he saw my phone number on our for sale sign out front and called me as well. And he was very apologetic. He said he couldn't sleep all night. He felt like, uh, you know, he felt really bad for what he had, how he had reacted and, and how he handled the situation. And he went on to share that a family member in his life has cancer and was going through chemo, was looking for a nice, quiet evening, place to relax, somewhere beautiful like his yard is. And uh, they weren't able to get that because my party was overshadowing that calm peaceful uh, atmosphere that he had created over there and eventually his guests had to leave his family members had to leave that were going through this tragedy and um, the scary time and so he as he called it kicked the dog he took it out on us and uh, barked over to us and he feels terrible for it and he says I shouldn't have handled that way I should have shared with you what was going on and, and I said yeah that's terrible that they're they're going through that I have a family member going through that as well I understand that and and uh, it definitely would have been better if you would have shared that with us. We could have all handled it better. And I, he was just really remorseful and manned up to coming over and, and talking to us and, and bringing it up, which is super uncomfortable. And I shared with him that I figured that he was having a bad day. That's That was our deduction. And I would love to be able to just go back and be neighborly with each other. And and uh, be cordial and he said I'd really like that so he appreciated me taking his apology and, and uh, I appreciated him coming over but the, the moral of that story is that doesn't happen too much these days you know, where you make a mistake and you're willing to fess up and own up to it and I just thought it was a fantastic gesture and move on his part he is a great neighbor and when he walked over I mean, he had to walk clear around the subdivision to get to our street and uh, for him to do that and even see my for sale sign knows that we're not going to be living here in a couple months. He could have just said, all right, I want to deal with them. I'll just, uh, you know, brush it under the rug. But to his core and who he is, he couldn't do that. He couldn't just brush it under the rug. He felt terrible about how he handled the situation and that he was called to come and talk to us and, and handle it that way. And uh, I just think it, you know, really just shows of what stepping up and, and owning your, your faults and, you, you know, your misjudgments and, and being
being a you know, manning up, if you will, womaning up, if you're a woman. <laughs> um, I just thought it was incredible that he did that. I really appreciated it and ended up being a, a good experience in the end.